The John Vulcan Academy has given me my son back. We thank you for saying yes to this program. I received diapers last year. I received diapers the year before, and I am so grateful that they are around. We have about 267 people, and that consists of everyone from police staff to our police officers. She's a lovely little senior girl. Right now we have uh, nearly 80 cats in our care. Fraser Focus, a fresh perspective beyond the bridge. Hello and welcome to another edition of Fraser Focus, bringing you stories that are often overlooked by mainstream media. I'm Dean Atwell. And I'm Leah Bolton, on the bridge today. And there's even a scooter going to pass us in a moment. It's action-packed here. In this week's segment, we visit the Adopt-A-Pet segment. And hello! <laughs> and we head over to Surrey for the diaper campaign. Now we also learn a little bit more about the community of Delta and more precisely we go for a ride along with the Delta police. But to start off the show we're changing lives with the John Vulcan Academy. The John Vulcan Academy has given me my son back a couple months to go and yeah. you'll be on your way. Alcoholism had completely consumed my life. I was rarely sober during my day, and um, every time I went to bed, I couldn't go, I couldn't go to bed without being drunk, which is a, a miserable existence. Oh, it's nice and warm out here. Yeah, it's super warm out here. I remember him calling me and telling me, Mom, I think I need to move home. And I told him that moving home wasn't an option anymore, and that was a pretty hard thing for me to have to say to Troy. Um, but I knew it was the right thing to say to him. Hang out and get to know each other on a different level, which yeah. would be awesome. We can do what parents quite often cannot do. And they all have a song to sing, or they feel that way, and they cannot sing it as, a, as an addict. When they come in, they are, they are sort of devastated. They are, they are depressed, uh, quite often suicidal. Fentanyl and then W18 and heroin. I myself have overdosed at least 14 times in three years. There was a year period where I went to recovery and I got clean, but even after a year sober, I still relapsed. And the first time using after that relapse, I actually overdosed and woke up in the hospital. This is where you eat all your meals. This is it. Uh, the treatment centers, they get them sober and then they continue with their lives. Our people, they come here they get sober, but then they learn the life skills. That's to stay sober. It's very structured here, which is exactly what, what not only myself, but all, all the other students here at the John Vulcan Academy need. You know, we wake up early. You know, we have to be on time to everything, which is extremely important. Yeah, so in the back, I'll have it ready for you in about 10 minutes. Sure. In 10 minutes? 10, 15 minutes. Okay. I'm going to call them right now. The program has a, a work training aspect to it, and that's what we're sitting in here now. It's called Price Pro. There's the furniture department, there's the bakery, there's the kitchen. Master baker, that's right. Master of the art. In rehab, it's true. I love it. I just started in the bakery and um, I'm gonna leave yeah. here having a trade because I'm gonna be doing the apprenticeship, so it'll be awesome. They want you to build um, life skills, right? So they want you to learn how to be responsible, how to be uh, on time for work. We need you to help and give back, and that's going to strengthen your sobriety as well by giving back to the junior guys that are coming through. Um, we have classes with our program directors and our case managers here on how to deal with anxiety, on how to, how to deal with trauma, you know, everything that you could think of to help you progress through your addiction, they have here at the John Vulcan Academy. Off the substances that were the main problem, but then in the second year, you really can start to develop who you are as a person. The first year, the educational component is about educating you on the tools to, to become a happy person. The second part, you actually go to school, and we've got people here finishing grade 12 right up to completing master's degrees. Where we just meet you wherever you're at when you get here and do an assessment, and then you start the education in the second year. Right now, I'm just checking my grade. I just submitted a paper, I think, on Thursday, and I wanted to check my grade. I got 99 out of 100. Look at that. 97%. That's pretty cool. It's really made all the difference. My dad came to see me last month and uh, said he, I was a completely different person um, and that he finally had his daughter back. So it's nice that other people can see the changes, too. A 
30-day or a 60-day program wouldn't have helped me. I needed something long-term. I needed something that I could work on day in and day out so that when I leave this place, I have the tools to live a, a happy and healthy and successful life. Cousins, yeah. and everybody's rooting for you. And, and are they all coming to the grad or? It's allowed us time to um, heal, recover, and to um, grow as a family um, all together and uh, no more missing pieces. I love him so much. <laughs> We thank you for saying yes to this program. Yeah, no worries. These are the kind of solutions we need to make a difference, one step at a time. That's right, it's all about making a difference, and we continue on with that theme as we take a closer look at the diaper campaign. We'll be right back. That's it, just one box? Just one box, and that's why we decided we need to launch another diaper campaign. Welcome back to Fraser Focus, local faces and local places. Right now we're in the heart of Surrey Central here. We're talking about the diaper campaign that is going on right now. Did you know that babies go through approximately 240 diapers a month? That's a lot. That's very nice. I like your dress. I do it's shop super. around a bit. I do shop for sales, so it's like I go to shoppers sometimes. I go to Walmart yeah. sometimes. Yeah. I go to Save on Foods. Whoever has the cheapest diapers, I go. So what do you think of this di diaper campaign that they have? I think it's great. I received diapers last year. I received diapers the year before. <laughs> so it's, uh, it's uh, been a couple years since they received diapers, and I am so grateful that they are around. No single parent or even couples with children are struggling, right? This world is going more and more and more expensive. Yeah. Housing are going up. Food is going up. So what does that mean? More taxes. Yeah. <laughs> it just, it just, you know, it's, it's hard in our society. Yeah. We can do this on our own. The reason why that we're having it is because there's a lot of moms that um, need diapers and diapers are expensive. A lot of moms that come to us have to decide between either um, buying food or buying diapers. It's rent or diapers. Yeah, it's, rent yeah. or diapers, food or diapers, and we want them to have both. I'm glad that you guys are here for the diaper diaper campaign because oh. if it wasn't for you guys, if it wasn't for the Surrey Food Bank, where would I be? We're going to have lots of diapers for moms who need them. That's awesome yeah. because, as we know, we're not getting them in the center as much as we probably should, and a lot of people don't think about diapers. That's it? Just one box? Just one box, and that's why we decided we need to launch another diaper campaign this year because it's something that every new mom needs, and it's something that's really in demand for the women that come in here. So we're going to head to Shoppers. Yeah, let's right. do it. Can pick up diapers. In 2015, when I became the owner of this store, um, I was contacted by my other colleague who was, who was involved at the time to raise um, the, the, the diapers and nappies. Um, so when Amanda called me, immediately my response was absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, my only concern was how much I could raise because I wanted to raise as many as I could for, for the women in Surrey. So, but I, you know, jumped on board and really tried my best to help get those yeah. uh, donations out there. And I could feel that too. When I was on the phone, I was yeah. like, wow, Richard, like, <laughs> he's really, um, yeah, it was like no convincing. It was like, well, yeah, this is important. We need to do this, right? The area can be quite challenging, but you know, we do have lots of people who struggle, like generally do struggle. Um, you know, it, it's great to be able to help them and get through, get through hard times. Do you want to put it on top of this one, maybe? Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. You can help in three ways. So one would be if you um, go onto our Facebook page, Surrey Women's Center, it's a Facebook page, and share the diaper post five times. Every five shares, shoppers will donate a box of diapers. Second is um, e-cards. So we're going to be sending emails out, and if you can forward the diaper email to five friends. Uh, and then third option, if you happen to have a box of diapers lying around that you don't need anymore, um, or if you you want to go buy diapers and bring them in, we are here, you can drop them off here and we will make sure they go to a mom and a baby who needs them. And let me tell you, if it's past the 18th, they'll still take it. Yep. <laughs> yeah, that yeah. is for sure. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm going on vacation this week. Well, next week is yeah. still good too. Awesome. We will take them. Yeah. This is my wife. I want to keep her safe and I want her to have a happy home. 
Please come on. The diaper campaign is running online until August 18th. We'll be right back here on Fraser Focus in a moment. Police officers are expensive. Oh my goodness! Welcome back to Fraser Focus. We're here in Delta, which lies on the most southwestern side of the Fraser River. We're here to learn more about policing and community block watch. And we're also going to be taking our work experience student, Cassandra, along for the ride. Let's go. So these are police badges from various different, so you'll see my shoulder flash here is Delta Police. So there's various different ones from all over the world and all over Canada. So we have about 267 people working in the Delta Police Department, actually about 260 people to be frank uh, with the Delta Police Department and that consists of everyone from police staff who are in a non-sworn to our police officers who are sworn officers. Okay Cassandra, you're jumping in the back. All right. Watch your head there sweetie. She's in trouble, she's in big trouble. We police the community, but a vast number of our police officers live in this community and we take a real responsibility for it. So it it's important to be a If this was the career for you, I mean, you grew up in England, did you not? I did, yes. So yeah. In the asked, motherland? As you asked like me to say. to say water or trousers. Ah, there you they go. were in trouble. Um, I knew I wanted to be a police officer from very, very early age. I don't know why. I don't have a family history of it. It was just something that always appealed to me. I actually started as a dispatcher and then I was a reserve constable at the same time, so sort of volunteering as a police officer, and then I finally got hired in 2006. Okay, did you see him holding anything today? Did he have any weapons? What about the volunteer groups? Now, talk to me about community policing. You said that that was something that you were, uh, that was very vital, important to you. So, so we have over 250 volunteers uh, in Delta. In Delta, and that's uh, from a population of 100,000. That's quite a few that's, that get into yes. policing. And so that is volunteers that are doing our victim services. That's volunteers that are doing our our CASA program, which is our. Um, home away from home. So if you go away for the weekend, we have volunteers that will go and check your property and make sure everything's okay. Hi, San. How are you? Good, sir. Good to see you. How are you guys doing today? Good. How are you? Good. Perfect. It's a beautiful day, and you guys are stuck in here. Well, I, I coordinate the Safe Schools program. Okay. Um, we go out to basically make the school a safe place for kids by educating parents. So how do you find that? Have you had a Oh, of... just we've had some, you know. So the main like, reason I volunteer is to try to, um, for a, pursue a job in uh, the criminal, you know, some sort of, to get myself ahead. So that's the reason why I'm doing it. Well, you're definitely built for it, mate. You're like <laughs> eight foot nine or something, aren't you? Well, this is how you go to We have a problem over here, we have a problem. There's a problem in the community. <laughs> and not necessarily everybody's actually going to law enforcement. Some people just love giving back to the community, which is awesome, of course. And then there is a lot of us who are going to law enforcement. And we're not doing it just because um, to help us further our career. We actually genuinely enjoy giving back to our community. Police officers are expensive. They, they are hard to be able to fund in a municipality, so you have to have tiers of policing, make sure the right person is doing the right job. So it's important for us to have that partnership for people to be able to come forward, work with us, be a team, be a partnership, that we can actually solve problems together. So functions, explain what we have in here. So what is this? So this is the computer. Okay. So this is the, the life, in, in some ways, the lifeblood of, of what we're doing. There's a regulator in the car that will stop me being able to push buttons when I get to a certain speed. So if you open this up, it so won't if I work. open this up and I'm going at 40 kilometers an hour or over, I cannot push. The only buttons I can push on here are ones that give me the map or ones that give me updates to a call I might be going to because obviously those could be quite important. Yeah. And then there's the that one, and then my particular favorite, which we do to each other when someone walks in front of the car. Your particular so some, favorite. So if someone walk. walks in front of the yeah, car like, and hey. just hit that and everyone's like... Whoa, whoa. Yeah, what are you doing? Jay Walker. So 
one thing that's always a surprise for people is, the, is what the back of a police car looks like. You'll see here it's a hard plastic seat. There's no comfort. No creature comforts it's, back uh, here. There's no door handles, obviously, for obvious reasons. We don't want our people jumping out again. Um, and like I said, I'm five foot ten. You're really making it uncomfortable for them. And it's, uh, and part of that is we don't want, if you're handcuffed, we don't want you sliding or moving around. Yeah. yeah. Well, I feel safer already. You're watching Fraser Focus. More local stories when we return. Uh... Adopt a pet has been brought to you by Purica supplements for healthier pets. That's so nice. <laughs> so cute. Hey guys, welcome back to Fraser Focus, local faces and local places. Exciting time of the month. We're back with our Adopt a Pet segment. I'm here with Linnea and we've got Agnes and Sophie today. This one's Sophie, right? Yeah, this is Sophie. She's a lovely little senior girl. She's a little dachshund um, and she was a stray here. And now she's uh, she's actually gotten a lot of a lot of little dog friends, and Agnes being one of them. Hi. So before she was ready for adoption, we make sure that medically she's all taken care of. So she's getting some recovery by Purica to help with her joint care, just like a human. Mm -hmm. And so we have Agnes, Agnes here. We met Agnes before. Yeah, so uh, you guys met Agnes before with her buddy Dorothy. Uh, now we've decided to place them separately um, because turns out Agnes isn't a super big fan of Dorothy's uh, company. Um, so now this senior girl's looking for a home uh, by herself. So what kind of uh, owner would she be good for? Um, so she needs a, a lovely, quiet home. Um, she doesn't prefer the uh, company of children, so adults only. Um, she could live with a nice, a nice dog or uh, possibly a cat, for sure. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Well, she's a super cutie, nice and uh, calm, I've noticed. Hi, Sophie. Hi, Maggie. So hopefully we can find a nice home for Agnes here. In the meantime, we're going to head inside and we're going to visit a cat named Bailey. So we had some fun out in the yard with the dogs and now we are back inside with Bailey and Jane. Tell me a bit about Bailey, Jane. Uh, Bailey is uh, a four-year-old medium-haired uh, tuxi. She is uh, very sweet. Uh, sadly, her owner passed away and uh, that is how she came to us. So Aww. through uh, no fault of her own and uh, it's been a little bit stressful for her here. Um, so she's really looking to get into a nice quiet home where she can uh, have some space to uh, settle down and and uh, be a lovable cat. It's it's tough. It's kind of an adjustment, uh, you know, just yeah. like for someone like us. If uh, you know some family member passes away, yeah. it's the same thing for cats. You would think, yeah. I mean, obviously, we don't know for sure, but uh, I think that they do emotionally. I think it, it is hard. it's it's a big adjustment to go from a home to a shelter, mm -hmm. and given the circumstances, it has to be that much harder for her. She gets along well with dogs. So maybe less kids in the yeah. mix for Bailey. <laughs> yeah, I think an adult home uh, with uh, no other cats, preferably uh, maybe another dog or just uh, being an only child. Um, and of course, right now we have uh, nearly 80 cats in our care. Wow. Yes, yeah, so um, we really uh, are hoping that uh, people will uh, see Bailey and someone with a special heart will come down and uh, give her a forever home, or maybe fall in love with one of the other uh, many cats and kittens that we have in our care. Oh, oh so. that was cute. <laughs> I really hope Bailey gets adopted soon. Did you know Langley Animal Protection Society is full again? If you want to adopt a pet, now is the time. We're going to head over to Langley now to the Trinity Western University Choir. One, two, three. What's so incredible about the choral art is that the whole is so much greater than the sum of the parts. I bring my piece of the, of the puzzle and the person beside me brings some other 
quality and color and voice. Uh, it's like when you're learning to drive a car and you think you know where the gas pedal is and then you hit the brake by accident. <laughs> yeah. The nice thing about choir is you're not, you're not singing alone. So there's a few different people standing next to you who are all singing the same thing. So if you hit the wrong key, <laughs> yeah, you can just kind of look at the guy next to you and say, what are you doing? Anything going on in the basses? Any uh, connections here? I sing second bass in the chamber choir of the School of Arts, Media, and Culture. What does second ba bass mean? Uh, <laughs> That's those are, crazy. Those are some of my low ones. I can't get that low. Our voice is an instrument. And because it is built within our bodies, you know, it goes through the ups and downs of the health of the body and our energy levels and even our confidence levels. Choirs all together, you know, you need a whole bunch of team players to be able to create that. It's not mm -hmm. really a solo mm -hmm. gig. That's true. But I think that's kind of what's most special about singing in a choir because a lot of members of choirs, and this is even true here, would not have the opportunity to delve into music or, or singing as something on their own time because a lot of our choir members are not music students. I'm actually in business. I've had friends that have sung in choir the whole time I've been at university and I've been partway through my university career. I thought uh, I'd play some instruments and a lot of my family members sing, but I've never done that, so I decided to try it out and I loved it ever since. I, yeah, specialize in kinesiology, um, and in my second year I switched into a double major in business, um, but I sang ever since my first year, and now I am a business minor. Aren't they making you want to sing, Dean? I think I'm going to save that for another episode, Leah. I'm going to hold you to that, you know that. <laughs> and that's it for this episode of Fraser Focus, bringing you stories from beyond the bridge. Now remember, if you have a story that you'd like us to share, please feel free to contact us. I'm Dean Atwell. And I'm Leah Bolton. See you next week.